Yeah, I wanted to see if we could catch up in the story of plasma cosmology between Birkeland and Alfman, because we had a really fascinating conversation the other day with another presenter who's going to be at our conference in Portugal this summer, uh, Gareth Samuel, who's a fantastic science communicator, and he's studied the story of plasma cosmology a bunch. And he pointed out some really interesting things that happened after Alfman. And I wanted to compare his ideas with yours but we need to get up to Alfven first. And, and so I think that to get to Alfven, it would be cool to tell a linear story. So we have Birkeland who travels to the Arctic. He finds that there are these places where the currents are driving directly into the earth. And that seems to, to transform our knowledge of how the earth works. And so I wonder if we can start from the point where he makes this discovery Talk about how that shifts our scientific understanding and then how Alphane emerges from this. Okay. But when are we going to get the chance to talk about why the Big Bang actually is scientifically invalid? The evidence. That's what we'll wind down on. Yes. I think we need to tell the story of the, the alternative right. to the Big Bang first. Okay. We're going to be linear. All right. Um, chronological. That's fine. I do things chronologically a well. lot. So... As I said, it was very unfortunate that uh, Birkeland fell ill and died when he was still in his 50s. Definitely that put a kink in the development of the field. So what happened next was the question of aurora, which was the actual phenomenon that he was dealing with. That became taken over by another scientist, a British scientist by the name of Sidney Chapman. And already back here in the 1920s, so uh, I forget Birkeland's actually death date, but it was, I think, in the teens, probably before World War I. So Chapman was the develop was an example of the early development of the purely mathematical approach to science. Now, what had happened at the time of World War I, we already have the development of special relativity, uh, the early stages of the development of quantum mechanics, people, scientists are still grappling with trying to understand the structure of the atom. We have the first stage of cosmology becoming a popular topic, and that is the announcement of the discovery of the bending of light by the sun after the 1919 solar eclipse expedition which was broadcast around the world by the mass media as a vindication of Einstein's theory of general relativity. And this was immediately after World War I, a point where nobody outside of science had ever heard of Albert Einstein. And uh, although he was certainly well known within physics, and while the mass media had always covered astronomy as something that people are fascinated with. This was really the first time it became headline news. And if you look at the New York Times coverage of this, it was the lead story, right-hand story. Didn't have a banner headline, but it was the right-hand story on their front page. Um, so it was all about Space is bent, uh, you know, gravity is curvature, you know, light has mass. It was played up as the first of what I would call the wow, gee whiz approaches to cosmology, that it was realized from the start that the incomprehensibility of this was you know, a good news lead 
something that would create readers, sight readers, and so on. At the same time, it was an enormous step backwards because what was emphasized was that this was entirely the product of Einstein's mathematical genius. That he was working with these uh, four dimensional equations, which Einstein himself said were difficult to, you know, deal with and keep in mind. Uh, and from this pure, you know, mathematical description, this new theory of the universe was unveiled and was confirmed by just a single experiment, a single observation. This was a big step in, first of all, creating the myth of the theoretical physicist as some sort of priest. He spoke in incomprehensible language with equations on the board. He said things that either seemed to be nonsense or were extremely difficult to understand. And, of course, uh, this was described as a discovery in pure research, something that had no real technological, but only ideological uh, viewpoint. And it's unfortunate that it was, this certainly was mainly the creation of the mass media. This is how they described it. But we can't absolve Einstein himself. To a certain extent, he did feed into it in a very ambiguous way. In some of his writings, and he wrote a lot for the popular, uh, popular writings. What is relativity is a popularization. He actually reinforced that, saying explicitly that science is going to move from inductive, from observation-based, to purely deductive, to creating theories based on just mathematical consistency, basically the way the universe just had to be. Our video has come out of LPP Fusion's research in fusion energy, the energy which will power a future of abundance for all, with a sustainable economy and a clean environment. Goods, housing, and transportation will be affordable to all once fusion kicks in. Fusion energy is the key to building a better world now. Support fusion research, $10 a month, at lppfusion.com slash support. The link is in the description. Thanks.